Welcome to Snapshots of History. I'm Gideon Hanamansing, and I invite you to come with me on a journey. A journey through five decades, from 1962 to 2012, and to discover milestones of Trinidad and Tobago's independence. We begin our Snapshots of History at the point where history was always made. Abercrombie Street in Port of Spain could be seen as the political heartland of Trinidad and Tobago. Abercrombie Street is named after Sir Ralph Abercrombie, the commander of the British naval force that seized Trinidad in 1797. The Red House on Abercrombie Street has been since 1962 the seat of the Parliament of the Republic. From its predecessor government building in 1834, emancipation was proclaimed. Here, in 1849 and in 1903, popular protest rose against colonial policies in the city, inaugurating a struggle for democratic reforms. Here, our democracy was challenged in an attempted coup in 1990. On the opposite side is the Hall of Justice, the seat of the judiciary of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, comprising the Supreme Court and the Magistracy. With independence, Trinidad and Tobago became responsible for its own administration of justice. And our first Chief Justice was Sir Hugh Wooding. The historical podium of the People's Voice, Woodford Square, has been from time immemorial a popular forum. Naming the park the University of Woodford Square, here Dr. Eric Williams conducted his public education lectures in the 1950s, later becoming the first Prime Minister of an independent Trinidad and Tobago. Here, the young people of the nation in 1970 raised their fists in protest to the slow fulfillment of the dreams of independence. A British colony no longer. After 165 years, the Union flag had been lowered and the red, white and black flag of Trinidad and Tobago was raised. Independence had come, and a new sovereign nation was born. Independence, a word that evokes dreams and aspirations, a political reality formed in the crucible of colonialism, shaped by the genius of visionaries who were able to see beyond the horizon and imagination, and to visualize the way, the hope, and the ambition of the unborn. As an independent nation in the Commonwealth since August 31st, 1962, the country can look back on a panorama of events that created the platforms for progress and development, each in their own time and circumstance. We can pride ourselves of some precious treasures that were born out of our political independence. We say thank you to them, our founding fathers. And we say thank God for them for taking us on this pathway to self-determination. The preservation of democratic institutions which are at the heart of development. The creation of a burgeoning entrepreneurial and creative middle class. The maintenance of a welfare state so vital in an oil-rich nation to provide equality and opportunity for all citizens particularly during times of economic downturn. For the first two decades after independence, Trinidad and Tobago's first Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, left his indelible mark on this young nation. Although not large in physique, Dr. Williams was perceived an intellectual giant by many. 
A sublime figure in his lifetime, Williams established most of the institutions of state present today. One of his most enduring legacies was the turn in the economic mainstay of the country towards industrialization. But you know, Eric Williams did not suddenly appear as in a previously empty room. He walked in the footsteps of those who had sought reform and self-determination in the 19th and early 20th centuries, when Trinidad and Tobago was still a British crown colony. Like this man here, Arthur Cipriani. The statue of Cipriani at the center of Independence Square in Port of Spain commemorates this man's dedication to the working class, to the man in the street during colonial times. Cipriani's name is indelibly connected to the struggle for self-rule in the 1920s and 30s, when he was the president of the Trinidad Working Men's Association and seven times mayor of Port of Spain. Cipriani was in many ways the fruit of a continuous fight for greater self-determination in the colonial system. There was the reform movement of the 19th century, which sent mass petitions of thousands of signatories to the British Crown. Men like Philip Rosta, Louis de Vitae, Henry Alcazar and Mozumbo Lazari became Trinidad and Tobago's first civil rights activists. From the fields and farms of rural Trinidad emerged another group that fought against the British colonial suppression of wages and the prevention of upward mobility. This was the East Indian National Association, which came into existence in 1897. Men like George F. Fitzpatrick, C. D. Lala, Saran Tiluxing, and F. E. M. Hussein were to give Trinbegonians of Indian descent a greater voice in the administration of colonial Trinidad. In the 1930s, disgruntled workers in the oil belt of Trinidad mounted massive industrial protests, clamoring for decent wages. Here we meet spirited speakers like Tubal Uriah Buzz Butler and John Rojas. Tobago's most significant trade unionist was APT James. Krishna Deunarain, better known as Adrian Kolarienzi, left his mark as the central figure and first president general of the Oilfield Workers' Trade Union and the Old Trinidad Sugar Estates and Factory Workers' Trade Union, both founded in 1937. Women's voices, too, made themselves heard even before independence. Elmer Francois and Christina King, for example, played significant roles in the trade union movement of Trinidad and Tobago in the 1930s. A contemporary of theirs was Audrey Jeffers, the first woman to get elected to the Port of Spain City Council in 1936 and to the Legislative Council ten years later. Jeffers left her mark when she founded the Coterie of Social Workers in 1921, a charitable organization comprised exclusively of women. Unforgotten in our album of historical snapshots are people like Albert Gomes, the flamboyant trade unionist of the 1940s. Gomes became an influential politician in the 1950s and was elected to the parliament of the short-lived West Indies Federation in 1958. Gomes also published The Beacon, a magazine of intellectual expression in which thinkers and poets like Ralph de Bozet and Alfred Menz published their thoughts. With the collapse of the West Indies Federation of the 1950s, the path to independence became increasingly clearer. Several organized political parties emerged, representing various interests in the populace. Personalities of the day included brothers Ashford and Mitra Sinanan, 
legislators, trade unionists, and attorneys in pre-independence years. Bhade Sagan Maraj, religious leader and popular politician in central Trinidad, and his successor, Dr. Rudranath Kapildeo, an eminent mathematician and long-standing leader of a vocal opposition. Lionel Sukaran, another outspoken opposition politician of the first decade of independence, whose inimitable style made him a crusader of nation-building. Simbunath Kapildeo, who advocated Trinidad and Tobago nationalism on a third-party platform in opposition to his brother, Dr. Rudranath. Tito Achong, Harvard-educated doctor and mayor of Port of Spain, an anti-colonial radical in pre-independence years. Sir Gerard White, the well-liked business pioneer with the common touch. Another Sir, Sir Larry Constantine, famous cricketer and attorney who, together with Personalities like Winston Mahabir, Ronald Williams, Dr. Patrick Solomon, and Kamaluddin Mohammed formed the first circle of political thinkers around Dr. Eric Williams. Our journey now takes us to Piaco International Airport and the close-up interface with the portraits of Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Ministers and Heads of State of the nation's 50 years of independence, a testimony to our vibrant democracy and free and fair elections. Dr. Eric Williams, who died in office in 1981 after 19 years of service. George Michael Chambers, who got confirmed in a general election later that year. A.N.R. Robinson, who became the Prime Minister in 1986 and had the difficult task of steering the country through an economic downturn. Pasto Pandey, the first Indo-Trinidadian Prime Minister, who was elected to office in 1995 and 2000. Patrick Manning, who served three terms as Prime Minister before and after Mr. Pandey and Kamala Pasad Bisesa, who became Trinidad and Tobago's first female Prime Minister in 2010. And over here are the five presidents since 1976, when Trinidad and Tobago became a republic, all eminent legal luminaries and academics. Sir Ellis Clark, who succeeded Sir Solomon Ho Choi as Governor General of Trinidad and Tobago, became the first President of the Republic. After his term, the presidency was held by Noor Mohammed Hassan Ali, who served for two terms between 1987 and 1997. Arthur N. R. Robinson, who succeeded him in 1997, and Professor George Maxwell Richards, who came into office in 2003. Commerce, travel, consumption. All of these are manifestations of our burgeoning middle class. The success of our independence lies in the creation of employment and enabling upward mobility. More than 18,000 small and medium-sized businesses form the backbone of our private sector. Many of them are family-owned concerns. SMEs today employ more than 200,000 persons and contribute nearly 30% to GDP. In the face of the rapid political changes immediately after independence, the large, modern holding companies like Neelam Massey and McEnany Olstons gave citizens a sense of permanence and continuity. They provided employment and maintained high standards in the private sector. During the Black Power Movement of 1970, Trinidad and Tobago's young people staged mass protests to call for better employment opportunities in the private sector. Politicians heeded their call and forced the foreign-owned commercial banks to localize their shareholding and to hire and promote citizens of all ethnic backgrounds. 
Some of the visionaries behind large enterprises were Sir Gerard White of Alston's, who brought brewing to Trinidad and Tobago. The flamboyant Sidney Knox of Neelan Massey was for many years the most influential personality in business in the Caribbean region. Insurance pioneer Cyril Dupre, Tommy Gatcliffe of Angostura, Nazir Ahmad of Southern Sales, and Anthony Sabga of Standard Distributors, and Ansem McCall, structural engineer Robert York, who built enormous structures like Piaco Airport and Atlantic LNG, hardware king Winfried Scott, and financier Arthur Lockjack. They all played important roles in diversifying the economy and providing employment. In 1973, CARICOM, the Caribbean Community and Common Market, was established by the Treaty of Chagaramus. Business leaders like Sidney Knox, Tommy Gatcliffe and Ken Gordon partnered with public servants like Central Bank Governor William DeMass, Head of the Public Service Reggie Dumas and the eminent politician and cultural leader Kamaladin Mohammed, all working with regional heads of state to make CARIFTA, the Caribbean Free Trade Association and later CARICOM, a reality. The agricultural sector contributed enormously to the quality of life here. Values like family life, environmental consciousness, care for fauna and flora, and the love of community all contribute to enrich the society. AgriScience is long enshrined in the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture continue to flourish at the University of the West Indies. For example, with the groundbreaking genetic research at UWI's Cocoa Research Unit. And in the area of livestock breeding, one eminent veterinarian, Dr. Stephen Bennett, stands out for his development of a superior breed of cattle, the Buffalipso, which he succeeded in introducing in the early 1960s. Red for one, green for the new 50, blue for the 100, these are the colors of the Trinidad and Tobago dollar. Our banknotes are decorated with images of oil barrels, drilling rigs, refineries, and port installations representing our vibrant petrochemical industry. Here are some of the milestones of our energy sector since independence. In 1971, natural gas was discovered. In 1977, ammonia exportation began. In 1980, a steel plant started up. In 1984, the first methanol plant came on stream. In the 1990s, substantial gas reserves were discovered and liquid natural gas production began in Point Fortin. Coinciding with high gas prices on the world market, this commodity caused a veritable boom in the first years of the 21st century. The first gas to liquids plant in the Western Hemisphere and an ammonia urea melamine complex became a reality. And in 2007, work commenced on a massive project to supply gas to Barbados via pipeline. Since independence, we benefited enormously from our oil and gas wealth. However, when markets fall, our economic dependence on these commodities can also be quite dangerous, as history has shown. As oil prices tumble toward their lowest In 1986, the world oil prices collapsed, and our republic plunged into a deep economic recession. Eventually, the International Monetary Fund had to come in and introduce a spade of unpopular austerity measures. Even though these did much in helping the country to recover, the hard times that the people experienced served to throw up a group of extremists who staged a bloody coup attempt in 1990. Black smoke rises around the TV station. 
latest reports say the coup leader, Imam Abu Bakr, and the army have only said building. that efforts are being made to release the remaining hostages. July 27, 1990, will forever be etched as the lowest point in our first 50 years of independence, when the parliament and our free press were taken hostage by armed insurgents. Many innocent people were injured or lost their lives, their property, their jobs. Ready to dance at Tobago Reel? Tobago has had a different independence experience from her sister isle Trinidad. Here, tourism and ecotourism, and to a lesser extent, agriculture and services contribute to household income. Tobago's laid-back lifestyle and beautiful beaches contribute to its economic success. Culturally very distinct from Trinidad, Tobago has its own language, cuisine, heritage, music and dances. Each year, the Tobago Heritage Festival features a very unique history and sports. The cannons at Fort George in Tobago remind us of our colonial past. Since independence, when we became a twin island nation, we ourselves as Trinidadians and Tobagonians have taken on the responsibility to care for each other so that all can fulfill their potential in this spirited country of ours. One of the achievements of independence is our functioning welfare state. There are many public programs and initiatives geared to facilitate opportunity and equality for all. The system has hundreds of programs for young people, for the elderly, for persons with special needs, for at-risk communities. But chronically ill can obtain medication free of charge. The treatment at public health care centers and hospitals is also paid for by the state. The equitable redistribution of the substantial petrochemical wealth is extremely important for the development of the country, especially in times of economic downturn. At independence in 1962, Dr. Williams said, the future of our nation lies in our children's school bags. These words have been heeded by successive governments since independence. The building of schools and the modernization of the curriculum has always been the intent of our educational thrust and probably never more than in this golden jubilee year when Trinidad and Tobago can boast of 480 primary schools and 140 secondary schools. And true to the words in our national anthem where every creed and race find an equal place the denominational schools of all major religions play a vital part in the academic and moral instruction of our children. Today, thanks to the country's energy wealth, free education can be offered to the young of this emerging ambitious nation all the way to university level. Trinidad and Tobago has invested massively into tertiary education. The University of the West Indies has existed since the colonial days and the additions during the 50 years of independence are the University of Trinidad and Tobago, the College of Science, Technology and Applied Arts and the University of the Southern Caribbean. Together, these cater to an on-campus student population of more than 40,000 with thousands more engaged in distance learning programs all over the region and indeed the world. Independence Day, the pomp and circumstance of the parade of our protective forces, a proud moment for those in uniform who felt the call to duty and service. Independence Day, a joyous outing into the Queen's Park Savannah with friends and family, a glitter of fireworks reflected in the eyes of those who will carry the nation forward. Independence Day, the festive moment when the President of the Republic pins a national award to your chest, humble himself in recognizing the service 
that you have rendered to your country. Since 2008, the nation's highest award is the Order of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. It honors recipients for distinguished and outstanding service to the nation. Its predecessor, the Trinity Cross, was replaced in 2008 by this more secular symbol. Together with the Shaconia Medal and the Hummingbird Medal, Trinidad and Tobago's national awards were presented for the first time after independence in 1969. Public servants are recognized with the Public Service Medal of Merit. History is made not so much by events of the past, but by what we do with those events. It is not about elections, but about how elected men and women choose to govern. It is not about economic ups and downs, but about what society as a whole chooses to learn from each thing phase. Each historical event in Trinidad and Tobago since independence on 31st August 1962 carried with it an infinity of choices. It is these choices which make the 50 years of our independence experience meaningful. Our ancestors came in colonial times from all corners of the world, bringing with them their cultural and religious practices, their knowledge and their imagination. Over the last 50 years, we all have made this our land, creating the stage for what lies ahead with our decisions and our actions. In gathering knowledge about our history, we will discover that there is always progress, always moving ahead. It is this knowledge that conquers uncertainty and takes away the fear of the future and prepares the platform of progress for the 50 years ahead. With the foundations we inherited, with the continued dedication and loyalty of citizens, with a rigid focus on achieving for all of our people, our nation now stands ready to redefine itself and to deepen its influence and contribution in the region and in the world. Our nation's best days are still to come, and together we will usher those days in. Side by side we stand, islands of the blue Caribbean Sea. This, our native land, we pledge our lives to thee. Here every creed and race finds an equal place, and may God bless our nation. Snapshots of our history, the first 50 years of independence. Many of us will not be here for the second, but those who helped to shape its pages would have laid a platform for those behind to do better, leaving in this passage of time a nation of people more enlightened, indeed more inspired to take their place on the global stage. For it is up to them to carry the torch to the next generation of Trinbagonians. I'm Gideon Hanamansing. Thank you for watching.